We are back. We are back with another CPU mining update and then uh, some more uh, learning with uh, doing some CPU overclocking via, a, via an old article instructions I found on the NiceHash site. So let's do it right now. We are at, this is not reflective. It's saying 532 current actual profitability in the 24 hours. That's low. Uh, if I go to each rig, which I think is actually more accurate, uh, let's see. If we go to this rig, it's showing a buck. Oh, about a buck eight for that for that rig right there, thirty nine hundred. I know it's not much, but it's something. This one is a buck seventeen, and these are all the same buck two. So we're fluctuating in around a little over a buck, buck ten, uh, buck twenty six. That's a thirty nine fifty and a buck eleven. So the dashboard seems a little bit off. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, not bad. I mean, it's not awesome the way it was when I did this. What? Oh, my God. Three weeks now. Two, three weeks now. Thanksgiving time. Yeah, it was, man, two bucks. It was making some decent money. I mean, for what it is, right? You are CPU mining, making a couple dollars before electricity cost, exchange fees, and maybe taxes if, you, if you're going to dump it or exchange it or swap it, whatever. Anyway, that's all I want to show on the current CPU profitability. I, uh, if you look at the past couple of videos, there are tools out there to help you guys. It's almost teaching you how to fish and not giving you a fish. There are uh, the NiceHash CPU profit, profitability calculator. You can use the What to Mine uh, webpage, the application for putting in your device, whether it's a CPU or a GPU, it'll give you the, oh, the algorithm, the most profitable algorithm to be mining for that hardware based on your electricity cost. That is a powerful site. What to mine is what's, what will help you determine, you know, what hardware to buy, what hard, hardware to uh, turn on and uh, what algorithm to uh, start, start, start mining, right? It's good. It's also a good way to get into the ecosystem of crypto mining, whether GPU ASIC or CPU mining. All right, enough of that crap. Let's go in. And this is the dovetail. This is part two. Uh, so you have a Ryzen master, right? If you're doing CPU and you have AMDs, they give you this overclock tool. They don't give it to you. You got to download it. It might be on the CD, though, that comes with the CPU when you buy it. I'm not sure. I never read the manuals, only, to, only until I get so frustrated that I'll crack open the manual and go, oh, that's obvious. So you can go to the AMD Ryzen master site and go to the support area and you can download this little bastard. It's the Ryzen master uh, overclock tool. And uh, if you're doing GPU stuff, there's a thing called MSI Afterburner. You go to the MSI site and just... Uh, Look for Afterburner, just freaking Google MSI Afterburner, boom, take it right to it, download it, and you can start overclocking your GPUs and burn more wattage or make it more efficient or crank the fans or whatever. There's a whole bunch of spreadsheets out there floating around the interwebs uh, about which hardware you have and what is the recommended overclock settings for the algorithm you're going to mine. So back in the day, the OG, it was the Ethermine. And then for a um, 3080 Ti, it had certain overclock settings, power, all that crap. Uh, and you would just set them, and then your card would be optimized. People spent time tweaking these things, trying to tune them in and get them right for each, uh, each uh, algorithm. So it's useful information if you can find it. I had a spreadsheet. I don't know where it's at right now. It's probably in some Discord but it's out there. You just got to do a little, little Mac research and you will find it. Uh, CPUs had some of it as well, but let's jump into it right away. Let's not make this video too long. It's meant to be informative, give you enough information so that you can take the little information and flush it or go out and do with it as you will and maybe learn how to overclock your CPUs and learn more, better yourself, become more tech savvy with this crap. And the beautiful, the beautiful, is that a word? The beautiful, the beautiful thing, the nice thing about Ryzen Master 
is that as you uh, mess around with the overclocks in manual mode right here, oh, give me a minute, I always forget. I gotta turn my little pointer on so you can see where I'm pointing. Oh, hang on, two seconds, there it is. Screen cursor, screen cursor activated. Blammo, look at that guys. Look at that, look, woo. All right, manual mode. You can set the voltage, you can set the clock speed. You can do an apply and test to make sure these settings do not fry or upset the uh, the force and cause your motherboard and CPU to reboot the machine. It will tell you. It'll say, hey, I don't like these profile settings. These settings you just entered and had me apply and test. No. And it will reset it back to the original settings. So it's a good way to test and it won't let you run and hurt yourself. So it's basically protecting you from yourself. Some guy come here and just crank this thing up. The thing, you know, they don't have the thing to catch on fire. <laughs> so they had definitely put in some safeguards. All right. So you get the gist of it. This is your overclock tool for AMD. I think AMD seem to be the best cards right now. The CPUs for CPU mining. Intel's not so much, but I'm sure you can go look on what to mine or um, nice hash profit profitability calculator and put in an Intel CPU and see what its profits are go do it i'm not going to do it i don't i have intels but they're not they're up there gathering dust upstairs right now lots of dust bunnies all right let's go where was i at how to here we go how to optimize dun, dun, dun. okay this is something i knew was out there back when i started doing all this crap in 2017 this article is uh november 27 turkey day about turkey day 2019 before the dark times before the empire uh yeah this is what's out there so this article let's zip through it this will give you an idea what you can do it may be a little outdated on some things but it'll give you an idea where to go look and you can just google this it's it's in their blog and you can go it's blog homepage guide and tutorials mining nice hash miner all right, how to optimize CPU mining performance for Monero. Dun, dun, dun. So we are mining, as you all know, random X Monero. That's the nice hash. Monero unminable, I think, is doing Zeph, which is all based on the same algorithm, Monero, but it's just a different coin. All right, where was I? All right, how to optimize CPU mining performance for Monero. Updated. Doesn't tell you when it's updated. All right, they're talking about forking. This is all outdated. I mean, this is old news. Disclaimer. You better read the disclaimer, guys. Before proceeding, you must understand that by doing a CPU overclocking, you could damage your CPU or motherboard. Uh, what else? And you will not be able to use it anymore. Well, I just went over that with Ryzen Master. It's hopefully going to protect you from yourself. Also, in most cases, the warranty is voided by doing so. Dun, dun, dun. We do not take any responsibility. You have to damage your hardware. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right. To start mining, all you have to do is install Nice Hash Miner and enable your CPU device. Nice Hash Miner installation guide. All right. This is old. You, you already know this stuff. Uh, let's see. This is the f interesting part. This gets into the details. It is worth noticing. Or noting, I don't know. No, nope. I'm English bad for me. Uh, hard. Uh, that most likely you will not have the same hash rate, even with the same CPU. All right, yeah, there is. Duh. Every every system's different. Random X mining is dependent on RAM frequency and latency. Our test with different RAM frequencies and latency on this uh, this case they're using a Ryzen seven thirty seven RX. You see how old this article is, but it applies. Right, it applies to to today. Uh, you can see that the RAM frequencies and the latencies yielded different results. Tests were performed on a system with an ASRock 570 Steel Legend motherboard. That's what my wife calls me. She calls me the Steel Legend motherboard with huge pages enabled. And you will see that now when you're running the um, XM rig with the nice hash miner, it's trying to get those huge pages enabled, which will crank up your hash rate. And that all dovetails into that MSR mod area you always see. So if you go over here, uh, let's see. You can see right when it starts up, it's trying to do the big pages. Ah, it just scrolled out. Take my word for it. Trust, 
Trust Crypto Jim. He won't steal your clear. Thank you, Crypto Jim. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. All right, thank you, Crypto Jim, for teaching us the ways of the overclocks or just guiding us to where to look. Uh, let's go back. Okay, here's the RAM influence on Random X. Random X, big daddies. So optimized 9,200 hertz per second. Uh, stock, 7,500 hertz per second. It just shows you what performance increase you'll get. First of all, make sure that you've updated your BIOS on the motherboard. There is guys, look at this. This is even good stuff just to learn how to do it, how to download the BIOS drivers, how to make a flash drive. So then when you boot up and go into flash mode on your BIOS, put your memory stick in, pick the version you want, and blam, it just goes and starts flashing the motherboard and you got the latest and greatest and all is good with the world. It's not that hard. The only trick is once you're flashing the motherboard, do not kill the power or anything. You will, you'll hose it up completely. All right. All right, RAM frequency and timing settings for Monero mining. All right, this goes into some stuff. Note that the setting XMP might not be the most optimal setting. Uh, we suggest RAM frequency to 3200, Infinity Fabric to 1600, and RAM timings to auto. These should be default OC values for every RAM model when mining the random X Monero algorithm. So this is all BIO settings on the this, in this case, this is what? I forget. I am short-term memory gym. ASRock. This is an ASRock. Oh, it's right there. Duh. This is an ASRock motherboard bio screen. Oh, it tells you how to do it. I like, I like stuff like this. They give you step-by-step. Just to, even they, they don't assume you're a genius. They assume you just haven't done this before. And it points you in the right direction. So restart or turn on the system. Repeatedly press the delete. Yeah, you got to hit that delete. And you got to have a video card in your uh, motherboard so you can see the bio screen. Otherwise, what are you going to do? It's just going to flash by. You won't, you won't even see anything. All right. If you're trying to get a remote or run headless, you need to initially have a motherboard, a motherboard, a GPU graphics card in there because uh, most of these CPUs don't have integrated graphics. So you're not going to be able to boot up and see anything with an HDMI cable plugged into the motherboard. That's the difference there. Oh my gosh, so it goes through setting the infinity fabric frequency to 1600. This is for that card. Uh, make sure you set the DRAM timings are set to auto and you want to save and exit. So this is again, this is using a Ryzen 7 3700X, but the idea, the concept, the processes are the same. So right now we're using, oh, go back, a DDR4. I have DDR4, I think 3600, I can't remember, around there. But this shows you how. Look at that, man. This is nice. This is not 20. What year? <laughs> 2019. Keeping it real. Boom. So, yeah, let's watch it for a sec. You get an idea. Look at that. Pop. Pick the DDR4 3200. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Now you will need to enable lock pages in memory. This is tricky. If you have Windows 10, this little bastard gpedit.msc is no longer installed with Windows 10. You you have to go out and install it. But even when you do, you come up with it. I had no luck doing this, adding the user group, your name, PC name. I have not had any luck. I tried it, lock pages in memory. Um, my name is already in there, the user, but the I couldn't add the PC name. I tried it on a couple uh, Windows 10 rigs and no joy. So I don't care. It's fine. Because here's the note that matters. If you want to use a huge page for better mining performance, install XM Rig right, which is what I'm running with Nice Hash Miner. It's a plugin. Uh, and then what is this? An instrument XM Strack RX only enables huge page. All right, yeah, they're just saying this is old, but you want to run it as you want to run XM Rig as administrator. And then there's also an NHM Nice Hash Miner, and they have an app an app yeah it runs to it and you might get a message up here let's go over here real quick under the under the little warning window on your nice hash miner and it might say look it needs administrator privileges for rig management uh let's just go look at something real quick so it's about buck 24 though see this is this is wonky to me it's bitching right about not running as admin 
but I'm still gonna buck 24. So let's go back to the notification. Watch this. Let me uh, let me pause. Watch. So 124. Pause that little guy. Go over here. Run as administrator. It restarts. I think. <laughs> here it comes. Do 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 do. A few moments later. A few seconds later. Okay. All right, let's just crank it up. You're going to get the MSR Merit error first, and you know the trick. What did we all learn? Pause it, Crypto Jam. Give it a second. One second. Let's count together. Uh, deux, trois. Hit it. There we go, big daddies. Now we got the big pages running. Let's see if we get big more than 120. If we get anything, we're going to sit here together. All right, let me let that run. All right, let's go back. What number is that? Remember number seven. All right, that talks about running again. That was the whole gist of it, running as admin. And you'll get the, large, the, the huge page, and that gives you the better performance. But it all comes down to memory, too. I was an idiot. I, I mean, I only had one stick, one channel loaded with DDR4 memory because they, um, they were just play rigs. I wasn't really optimizing them. People made a great comment. Hey, put, put two channels in there, two sticks. Did that, holy crap, performance spiked. It was awesome. Memory is key with this stuff. All right, let's go down. Here's the Ryzen 7 3700X. All right, so two gig, eight gigabytes, 3200 megahertz um, memory. So we got, yeah, here's the huge page difference. Huge page off, you're getting that hash rate. Hash per second, huge page on, uh, 92. So what, 30% more of that? Not too shabby. Next thing is to download AMD Ryzen Master. Oh look, they even give you the link. Thank you, nice hash. Whoever, all right, this blog creator needs, deserves a cookie. He did a great job. He actually puts links in when he's referencing stuff. And this, uh, this way you don't have to go digging for stuff. Here it is, boom. Well, let's hit it once. Better not be porn. Okay, good. Yeah, it takes you right to the Ryzen Master, and you can go in and download the little bastard. All right, it actually took me off my page. Great. Let's go back. Oh, my God. Marco Talman. Oh, Marco, you did a great job. I don't know. If he, I don't think he's Italian. He looks a little swarthy. Maybe he's not Italian. Who knows? Oh, where are we at? Where are we at, Big Daddies? All right, we're back here. This shows the improved speed with the huge page stuff again this is great for learning and understanding why things are the way they are based on the huge page uh settings and running as system admin and xm rig and memory all right you download the md ryzen master this is an overclocking tool that allows you to change cpu core speed and lower or increase voltage ryzen master tool also allows you to overclock ram all I've ever done on this, as you saw, is lower the voltage to keep the temperatures lower. And performance was the same. Here we go. Look at that. Setting core speed and peak core voltage, big daddies. All right. One, select profile. And two is, where's two? Two, enable speed mirroring of one core to all other cores. Three, increase core, core speed by 50 megahertz. This depends on your CPU capabilities. All right. Four. Click apply, uh, start mining, enable only CPU devices in HM at this point. So if you have GPUs in that, just run CPU at this point via the nice hash miner. If you do not experience any issues, repeat this process until your PC becomes unstable. And this is what you do with GPUs as well. You kind of use uh, afterburner and you slide the, no the <clears throat> you slide the knobs up and down until you find that perfect hash rate and the temperatures and stuff and it doesn't reset i just always hated doing that because i always felt i'm gonna brick or fry the gpu and boom there goes 800 bucks right ouch all right um what are we talking here this is why we prefer to overclock the cpu via ryzen master instead of directly through bios yeah i never was a big fan of the bio stuff and i have the um, msi boards it just didn't have all the settings on there i could see it wasn't intuitive to intuitive enough for me to go in and overclock via the bios and i like ryzen master because it's a dedicated app for that hardware right tool 
for the right job. All right, if you run into an unstable PC, you can increase peak core voltage. During this, uh, doing this will allow a higher core speed, but will yield a higher power usage and higher temps. Exactly. Man, RTF, I'm, whoever wrote this is, is good. Thank you, dude. I will go to look at his name again. <laughs> when the overclocks are stable, click one save profile. All right. If you wish to limit threads. So how many threads do I got? I have 12 core processors. How many threads are in this thing? There's 12 core. I don't know. All right, let's go back. You got the 12 cores. I forgot how many threads are in that. Is it 12? I'm stupid. It's late. <laughs> All right. You can actually go. The point here, if you wish to limit threads, cores. Yeah, duh. There we go. Uh, if you want to limit your, from say I have 12 on the CPU so that you can keep on using your PC for office work or web browsing or uh, whatever else while mining. You can go to this guide. We're going to go there. You know it. We're going to click that link. I don't know. If you're going to mine, mine. If you're going to try to mix it, you're not going to get any performance anyway if you're trying to do other things. It's, your, your mining should be key if you're going to make it mine. Just give it all the cores, big daddies. Unleash the CPU so it can bring you lots of Satoshis. All right. If you have any questions regarding overclocking what core speeds you use, feel free to join our Reddit. Or discord server where you can ask other users for advice or even share your hash rates with community yeah get in some decent discord some that are reputable not some that are uh a den of vipers or venomous or like twitter evil you just want to get with normal people who are trying to help each other help a bro out right not people that are just being douchebags so find a good discord server maybe this is one nice hash not don't reddit scares me um yeah those guys are interesting cats in reddit so anyway, let's go, let's go click this guide. But first, let's go check number seven. Uh, it's running about 10 cents more. It was running 120. Now it's running $1.30. So I don't know, maybe running as admin did make a difference. You've got to check your stupid logs here sometimes. It's doing it again. Oh, wait, was that an old one? There's no date on it. Wait, more info. 2215, 1120, oh, that's an old one. Okay. Oh, if you want to use rig manager, so here's, here's why. NHM needs administrator privileges for rig management. So, all right, if you want to use rig manager for OC fan command settings, you must run NHM at a, as an administrator. Why? Because, when you go over here, say I'm on this rig right here, Big Daddies. Whoops. Come on. You can go here. And you can get in here and do commands, benchmarking. And that goes over to your rig. And that this enabling the running as admin on the rig allows these commands from the uh, nice ass desktop dashboard to send the commands down and actually command and control your rig. There you go. We learned something together. All right. Let's click on this guide. I'm curious. This is the limit the thread guide. All right. Let's see if it does anything. Ah, ooh. Oh, it's new. They updated it. June 29, 2023. A good year. All right. In this blog post, we will show you how to limit your CPU threads when mining. This will allow you to continue to use your PC without lagging while mining. Eh, I, I just mine, man. Don't, you know. You can't mix, you can't hybrid it. It's not going to be, it's going to, it's going to hurt both. You know, mine for a couple of hours and when you want to work, work, turn the mining off. All right. What are your CPU threads and how are they different to your CPU cores? The short answer is that CPU threads deliver work to the CPU cores. The cores are like factories and the threads are the workers. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, only cores are the actual hardware. While threads are more like virtual components that manages the task. Yeah, it's just software threads. In Linux or Unix, we had a thing called green threads. And you just, depending on how many CPUs that you had on your workstation, duh, the cores, you can uh, multi, uh, whatever, spawn up to this many threads to make the system 
uh, very performant. Normally, the core versus thread ratio is one to two. In modern CPUs, we can find two threads for each core. Look, I'm learning something. I, I kind of knew this stuff in the software, but when you talk about hardware, it's like, oh, this makes sense. When you launch NHM and start CPU mining, the program will use all of the threads available. In order for you to limit the intensity of the mining program, we need to limit the threads that will be used for mining. <clears throat> right, we will use a Ryzen 3700. The miner will set the most optimal configuration based on CPU specs. All right, 16 in our case. If we want to limit the CPU to 50%, we will only want to use eight threads and four cores. So it's an eight core 16. They want to go halfies. Uh, halfies will be eight threads, four cores. Here's XM rig. Oh, that's, that's right. You can do it in the command line. In advanced mode, you set the extra parameters. And if you're doing a batch script, you can do it also in the command line on the batch. Let me just put this argument, dash dash threads equals N. I'm not gonna do it. I don't see a point in doing it, just mine. Oh, this is just more stuff. That, oh, that's okay. We already know this stuff, guys. If you watch my videos, we went over using, oh, nice hash miner, but with XM rig. All right, and there you go. That is all I want to go over. Just a little resource out there, what overclocking is. You can get the Ryzen Master. You can play around if you want to learn more. A great way to, just a great way to get into the environment, the hardware, understand what affects things, the memory, the threads, the cores, all that good stuff, running with huge pages on, all that all ties together and uh, basically affects your hash rate. And then you kind of understand how does it affect the hash rate per algorithm? Because each algorithm may require different overclock settings. It just never ends. Anyway, there is spreadsheets out there. I should find one. If I find one, I'll post one. Uh, and then you can play around and have fun with it. But go forth, do great things. Let me know what you're mining. Let me know if you're, you're having fun with it or you're making any money. Uh, what hardware are you guys buying? Are you buying hardware? Are you using old hardware like me? Uh, I'm cheap. I'm not buying anything because, again, this is just for fun, and I don't want to go into debt with a bunch of hardware that may uh, become unprofitable, and I won't get my ROI, and it'll just sit, be sitting there gathering dust. And if I go to eBay and sell it, then I got to pay 14%. <laughs> There's a whole life cycle to this whole mining operation. Hey, if you're doing GPU mining, let me know. I want to know how that's going for you as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, we kept it at, oh, under 30 minutes this time. All right. All right I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you find any better articles in that for uh, overclocking CPUs, please post it. But Ryzen Master is the uh, great starting point and this blog post. So go forth, learn. That's what it's all about. Better yourselves. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next time.